Nina Alexander and Napoleon, I know them all. I read them all. I studied them all. I know the art of fight. I know the art of war. That's all I ever studied. That's why I'm so feared. That's why they feared me when I was in the ring. Because that's all my, I was an annihilator. That's all I was born for. Sports have been around a long time. War has been around longer. Many of the games we play today have exact parallels to warfare. Life comes with competition. You're either competing against someone else, something, or yourself. Sun Tzu's book, The Art of War, shows you the path to victory, whomever or whatever your enemy might be. Hello, and welcome to Sports Faults, presented by Data Productions, uncovering the untold, lost, and forgotten files of the sports world. Today, we will be covering the principles of Sun Tzu's book, The Art of War, in relation to and how his teachings influenced sports. Sun Tzu was a Chinese general, military strategist, writer, and philosopher who lived in the Eastern Zhao period of ancient China. Sun Tzu is revered in Chinese and East Asian culture as a legendary historical and military figure, which is why elite sports athletes follow his teachings like Mike Tyson and many others. Tzu has said, the art of war is of vital importance of the state. It's a matter of life and death, a road either to safety or to ruin. Hence, it is a subject of inquiry which can, on no account, be neglected. Let's jump into the principles. The art of war is governed by five constant factors to be taken into account in one's deliberations. The moral law, the heavens, the earth, the commander, and method, and discipline. The moral law causes the people to be in complete accord with their ruler, so that they will follow him regardless of their lives, undismayed by any danger. Heaven signifies night and day, cold and heat, time and season. Earth comprises distances, great and small, danger and security, open ground and narrow passes, the chances of life and death. The commander stands for the virtues of wisdom, sincerity, benevolence, courage, and strictness. By method and discipline are to be understood by marshalling the army in its proper subdivisions, the graduations of ranks among the officers. Moral law in regards to sports would be the love of the game for most. Growing up, the driving force many kids have within their sport is for the love of it. They follow their coach's orders because they want to play and want to be the reason why their team wins. When it comes to professionally, though, the moral law tends to be money. The love of the game matters, but the driving force for pros is to stay in their league and to make as much money as possible, along with fame and all the other things that comes with being a professional athlete that don't necessarily have to do with the essence of the sport. Heaven and earth would be your sports season and playing surface. The commander would be the head coach. Method and discipline would be the rules to the game. Even in real war, there are some unwritten rules, like protect those who are not fighting, such as civilians, medical personnel, or aid workers. In war, let your great object be victory, not lengthy campaigns. You want to win as quickly and swiftly as possible. The 21-0 in Madden. If you're up three scores on Madden, you gotta get off the sticks. If you know your enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know yourself, but not the enemy, for every victory gained, you will also suffer a defeat. If you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle. This is why athletes and sports teams practice, train, and film study. Via these methods, you will learn more about your abilities, but also your enemy's tactics and abilities via film study. The energy developed by good fighting men is as the momentum of a run stone rolled down a mountain thousands of feet in height. Momentum is key in sports. An object in motion stays in motion. 
like basketball. Basketball is a game of runs. Another common idea is that teams want to get hot at the right time before playoffs. So that's why you see teams wanting to get healthier, wanting to be on the same page right before it's playoff time. Because once again, momentum is important. An object in motion stays in motion. So if your team's on fire and it's hot at the right time, you might be able to beat the quote-unquote best team in your league in playoffs because they might not be playing as well. He who can modify his tactics in relation to his opponent and thereby succeed in winning may be called a heaven-born captain. The five elements, water, fire, wood, metal, earth, are not always equally predominant. The four seasons make way for each other in turn. There are short days and long. The moon has its periods of waning and waxing. Going back to the general rule of knowing and understanding yourself and your opponent, utilizing your strengths while trying to hide your weaknesses is key in competition. Like boxing, for instance. If you know your opponent has a killer right hook, then as a smart competitor, you will train to defend against the right hook and find the other weaknesses on that opponent. In war, the general receives his commands from the sovereign, collects his army, and concentrates his forces. The general, who thoroughly understands the advantages that accompany variation of tactics, knows how to handle his troops. There are five dangerous faults which may affect a general. Recklessness, which leads to destruction. Cowardice, which leads to capture. A hasty temper, which can be provoked by insults. A delicacy of honor, which is sensitive to shame. Over solicitude for his men, which exposes him to worry and trouble. This, in a sense, is coaching. The coach must know all things about the team. If soldiers are punished before they have grown attached to you, they will not prove submissive, and unless submissive, they will be practically useless. If, when the soldiers have become attached to you, punishments are not enforced, they will still be useless. Soldiers must be treated in the first instance with humanity, but kept under control by means of iron discipline. If in training soldiers' commands are habitually enforced, the army will be well disciplined. If not, its discipline will be bad. If a general shows confidence in his men, but always insists on his orders being obeyed, the gain will be mutual. Some good examples of good sports armies in March, Bill Belichick, Tom Brady, and the Patriots, or Greg Popovich, Tim Duncan, and the Spurs, Coach K and the Duke Blue Devils, Nick Saban and the Alabama Tide, all example of hard-nosed generals who were able to have their men in complete obedience to the mission at hand. And usually, the reward for the complete obedience is holding up a championship trophy at the end of the season. What's your take on this topic? Do you believe in these principles? Let me know your thoughts below in the comments and subscribe for more investigation content like this. Join my Patreon today for only $5 to receive a monthly esoteric documentary on your favorite sports athletes and events. Real, raw, uncut, and uncensored without the limitations of YouTube. Join today to see the other side of the sports world.